Hello, my name is Michelle McAllister and I'm a marketer. And when I tell people I'm a marketer and have been for my entire professional career, I'm usually met with a lot of observations, questions, assumptions, complaints. I've taken the time to really define my job for myself over time. And when asked, I explain what I do as committing to understanding consumers who they are today and who they want to be tomorrow, designing solutions for their lives, and then telling stories in which consumers can see themselves as the main characters in every piece of content that leaves my hands. However, normally those conversations go something like this. It's really creepy how you guys are always serving me up the right ad as I scroll through Instagram. It's like you can hear me. Or something like, are you the reason that there are 350 plus unread emails in my promotion tab right now? I can't get through all of those. Or something like, you guys aren't even carried in my local drugstore. Like, what's up with that? There's a market. I would buy it, but you're never there. And all of those things are the, the fault or the beautiful effort of your favorite marketers. But what I'd ask you to consider is the power of each one of those things. The power of that, that piece of junk email or promotions email that you get in your inbox every day. Or the power of a perfectly tailored, served up ad as you scroll through your favorite social platform. Or the power of an out of stock in your local, in your local drugstore or not even being carried in your city or state. All of those things, sure, make sense in their own right. Call it great consumer targeting. Call it a specified distribution plan. Call it a rock solid marketing strategy. All of those things make sense and positively, positively impact the bottom line at the end of the day. That's not what I'm getting at. That's not the power I'm talking about. The power I'm referencing is the power that each one of those marketing tactics has on society. Have you ever considered that marketing, every tactic that you've ever put into the market or every piece of content that you have ever consumed, whether actively or passively, is a social statement? A social statement. And by that, I mean something that helps shape how we think, feel, act, what we hate, what we spend our money on, what we aspire to be, how we interact with each other the broader community and society as a whole, shaping views around politics, economics, and the like. A social statement. So you're telling me my email campaign for 40% off is a social statement. So you're telling me that that perfectly served up IG ad is a social statement. So you're telling me that the fact that this product is not carried in the south part of this city is a social statement. Yeah, I am. I'd argue this. We are used to the arts being the place where we hear progressive and profound messages about society. Literature, theater, arts, music, Thou, those are the places, those are the mediums through which we are used to consuming content about society, who we are, what's wrong with us, where we're going, who we could be. But you'll watch a movie one or two times. You'll listen to a song a dozen times, more if it hits the radio stations. And you'll read a book once, if you finished it the first time. Guilty. But a dedicated marketer will ensure that you see an ad or a particular campaign 40 plus times in order to convert you to a buyer, to make you one of their consumers. Those are the message that we see every day. Those are the messages that we are constantly being bombarded with across every platform, every medium, from digital to in-person, audio and the like. And what shows up in those messages 
I'd argue, has just as much of an impact on society, how we see ourselves and how we see others, as any other piece of art does. So what does that mean? It means that we as marketers, we as a community of business people, have a step change to make in the way we view what we do, in the way that we view our role in society. And it's long overdue that we accept that role courageously and embrace it and put content into the marketplace that shows up authentically and courageously and is meaningful. It is time that we as marketers take it upon ourselves to not talk to our target consumers only, to not have blinders on to the impact of our work in greater society. And it is time that we commit to showing up and telling people's stories courageously. And so how do we do that? The first step is the name of this session. Recommit to the consumer. Recommit to understanding the consumer in ways that you may have never imagined, in ways that can be uncomfortable, in ways that can be new, in ways that can be redundant, and in ways that can be eye-opening. The first step is to reorient ourselves around the consumer, the consumer as a person, a whole person, and not just our consumer. In the first step of recommitting to understanding consumers and understanding them as people, I challenge you to view the consumer at the macro level. Not your consumer, but people. Intentionally widen your target audience because there may be people you're missing. There may be linkages that you're missing from having such a narrowly focused target. When you intentionally widen the scope of who you're looking for and who you're listening to, the possibilities of what you can uncover widens as well. And after you take that broader step back and you stop looking at just me as a consumer and you start looking at me as a bigger part of my population in my society, for example, your next step is to listen to the unprompted voice of the consumer. This is my personal favorite part. Because we like to believe when it comes to underrepresented consumers that we have people who are voiceless. That there are consumers and groups and communities out there who are voiceless. They are not voiceless. They are not being listened to. And that is a difference. The tools are there. Anything you want to hear, you can hear. It's all about what you're looking to listen to. So instead of taking the first step as brands, as we normally like to do as marketers, asking questions, probing, trying to understand where we fit in to a consumer's lives, just stop talking and listen. There are all the tools, the social listening tools, the ethnographies, the focus groups. There are so many mediums at which we, at which we attack the problems of what does the consumer want? What are they saying? What are their issues? What are their problems? But we're only listening for ourselves. We're listening for our brands, for our categories, for our industries, for problems that we are, are poised and have written down in our marketing strategies to address. But we are not letting the consumer just talk. Listen to what they are saying about what's really going on in their lives. Listen to how the greater problems going on in society, economically, racially, politically, geographically, are affecting them. Because that is where your consumer lives. Your consumer does not live in your aisle. Your consumer does not live on your digital platform. Your consumer lives in a great big world that is attacking them from all sides. And to understand that consumer as an entire person, you need to listen to what they're saying when nobody is asking. Those will be the issues that they care the most about. What are they saying when nobody's asking? So I challenge you to consider what you know 
about your target consumer, what you really know about her, and challenge how you got to know her. Because if you got to know her on your terms, your terms as a brand or a company, you don't know her as well as you think you might. You need to get to know consumers on their terms, in their words. And when you do, you'll start to find bridges. I, I argue that the target consumer needs to be broadened. That we should no longer have one archetype of our target consumer when it comes to marketing, because that is limiting. It is so wildly limiting. One archetype does not cover who your consumers are. It can target one of your consumers and then you leave out the rest. You leave out the stories and the experiences and the nuances of everyone who doesn't fill, fill the archetype of what you've built as the target consumer. So I say build three. Build two, build three, build four. Your consumer group obviously cannot be the entire market, but depending on your industry, depending on your product, your service, whatever it is you're doing, build enough archetypes of your consumer to account for the true nuances in the market so that people are truly seen and captured, not forced into something you feel like you can address in a consumer archetype. That is marketers talking to consumers. And what we are asking now is for you to let the consumer guide you. And you cannot be led by one consumer and tell a full truth. You can't. You cannot be led by one consumer and tell a full truth about a group of people. Because consumers are tired. And they are frustrated and they are fed up and they are angry with the 2D stereotypical depictions of their lives that show up due to limited archetypes, due to limited understandings of their experiences, of their lives, of where they fit in and where they don't, of where they want to fit in and where they don't. But those same tired and exhausted and frustrated and fed up consumers are also loyal and they are powerful, and they are valuable, and they are nuanced, and they are quick, and they are educated, and they are resourceful. So any company that is showing that they do not have a commitment to understand consumers as they are today in their own understanding of themselves, not in a company's depiction of themselves, will find themselves irrelevant at best and targeted and canceled at worst. So it behooves us all to be able to understand a consumer from their point of view. When you go back to your offices to write new archetypes and, and new target markets and new understandings of who you're trying to talk to, use the words of the consumer, not yours. Because the language that you use to describe the consumer reveals your understanding of where, they of where they sit and where they stand and your commitment to understanding and embracing another consumer's culture, understanding, experience. No consumer is asking for their lives to be translated by somebody else. Nobody wants their, shared ex their life experience to be translated into words that are comfortable for someone else's. Everybody wants the same thing in life which is to be valued and respected, appreciated, seen and heard. But it doesn't mean they want to be like you. So do not use your language to describe somebody else's experience and culture. And that goes down to your consumer. The way you talk about your consumer internally should be the way your consumer talks about themselves. That is where understanding is built into the marketing process. That is how that understanding can carry its way throughout the entire marketing process all the way to the end. 
so that the output matches the input. Great, so now we know our consumer. We've done the work, perhaps you've done the rework, to really go in and understand who they are at the core from their point of view. That's fabulous. Now what do we do? Well, now the implementation part and a little bit of soul searching on your part as a brand. Now it's your job to authentically represent those stories in your products and services, in the stories that you tell, where you decide to show up, and how you decide to show up to those, to cons to those consumers. And the way that I think about addressing that is you uncovered so much about your consumer. You discovered what they think about the macro issues going on in the world, and you've hopefully figured out how that affects your consumer directly and what they care about. All the racial tension going on in the United States right now, Black Lives Matter movement, everything that has surfaced out of that means something to everybody. But maybe to your consumer, it means that she's afraid for her husband to go outside on a run at five o'clock in the morning. And that's how it manifests in her life. So you've distilled it down. Now it's your job as a company to understand where you can be a bridge. This is about the part where you fit into the consumer's life. Where do you actually serve a purpose in that, in that person's life? Where can you be a bridge from what they care about at a societal level and what affects them at a societal level? And how can you show up in their lives and in market in a way that makes life easier. Not just from a product solution standpoint, but from a messaging standpoint, from what everyone else who will see your ad, whether they are your direct consumer or not, will think when they see it. How can you make your consumer's life easier? Everything we do as marketers should be in service to our consumers. Because if it's not, we're designing the, from the wrong way up. Everybody deserves to see positive images of themselves reflected back at them in the world. Marketing is the most powerful tool we have to make that happen. And one of the most important societal messages that we put out whenever we serve up a campaign and ad or anything. Because when you don't, when you don't reflect all groups positively and let those people be reflected back in the world, those are the messages we're saying, putting out there that says, we don't see you positively and we won't. Those are messages that say, this sort of product and service isn't for you when we limit our distribution. We say things like, people like you don't do things like this. Those are the messages that we put out to those who are your direct consumers or not. And I say it again because it's so important. We think far too narrowly when we think about our societal impact of our messaging and our campaigns. We think we're talking to consumers, but we're not. We're talking to a much broader swath of people who remember those images. I can think of 15 ads I've seen today none of which maybe reflected me, two of which maybe I'm a direct consumer of, but every single message hit me and told me something about what that company thinks about people like me, what that company doesn't think. Maybe they don't think about me at all. And those types of things are reflected in our messaging, in our words, in our visuals, in our campaigns. And there's no excuse for it anymore. The marketing practice across all industries has such an opportunity, has such a great need for a greater representation across various lines of diversity that it's almost palpable. Consumers have been begging us to tell their stories. Consumers have been begging us to show them their faces. Because that is a way, one of, the, one of the fastest ways that we as marketers can help leave society better than how we found it. By showing a person a picture of them 
by telling a person their own story and painting it as aspirational, by painting that as the goal. The impact that that can have on people to see themselves as the goal, to see their life as a goal, to see their life as valuable the way it is, to not be constantly striving to look and feel and live in a way that depicts somebody else's life entirely. When, when consumers are shown that they are good enough as they are, that companies recognize that they are good enough as they are, that they are valuable, that they are respected, that they are loved for just existing, and that they are seen. Because remember, communities are not voiceless. Companies just aren't listening. And when we listen, and when we put that back out into the market, that means something for those who look like those who are underrepresented and for those who don't. For those who are always used to being the majority, who are always used to being represented, they too are taught and, and, and get to see and learn and understand that their way of life is not right. It's not the only way. You've understood your consumer. You've recommitted to understanding her. You've listened to her. You're gonna, you're gonna represent her authentically. You're gonna use her language. You're gonna let her speak for herself. You're on the right path to, to meaning something for this group of people in society and, and for a, a larger group of people in society in terms of the messages that they're going to be consuming from you. So that, that's enough, right? No, 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 it's not. <laughs> that final piece is to build bravery into your plans. And when I say that, I mean, take a second to take, think of all the insights and all the knowledge that you've gathered from this consumer and from your group of consumers, because we're no longer working from just one archetype anymore. So from your group of consumers, your consumer cohort target. What is it that they need you to be saying that maybe you are or maybe you aren't yet? Where do they need you to be showing up? What do they want you to say? How do they want you to help? This is where we separate it a little bit from where you think they can help and you're gonna show them that you can help to listening to where they want you to be. Because sometimes that means it for companies being on the front lines of the issues that affect their lives the most. And that, it can be a tricky, taboo topic for a lot of companies. Because that means taking a stand. That means being brave and courageous on behalf of your consumer by using your platform as a brand and a company to reflect their values, to show them that you are aligned with not, not just who they are when they want to consume you as a brand or a product, but who they are when they wake up every morning and go to bed every night, who they are when they live their everyday lives. Are you there for them when it comes to that? Are you truly in service of your consumer every day? Because sometimes that means being polarizing. Sometimes that means turning people off. Sometimes that means losing consumer groups. Sometimes that means bad press. And those are all things that most companies want to avoid. But consumers are tired of the companies who want to support them behind the scenes. Behind the scenes is not where it's at anymore. Consumers want frontline brands and companies to stand with them as they stand up for the things that matter. And they want to know you care too. And if you don't say it explicitly, it doesn't count. If you can't prove it with your actions, it doesn't count. 
Consumers are not giving out participation awards. They're rewarding companies and brands with their dollars, with their loyalty, for being there with them on the front lines. And that is a place where a lot of companies have to figure out where and how they want to play. How are you willing to show up for your consumer group? How are you willing to make life easier for them? How are you willing to make a greater societal impact on behalf of your consumer other than how you directly impact them in their industry? And by that, I mean when they buy your product. That's what consumers want to know. Social change marketing is real. Consumers care about the societal impact. They just do. And if you took yourselves out of your marketing shoes, you care as well. We have to stop deciding to check what we care about from a societal point of view at the door when we go to work. Because we're marketing for society. We market within a society. Our consumers are a part of society. And the things that matter in everyday society, the things that are rocking our world, rocking our news channels, blowing up our phones every day, are the same things that our consumers are experiencing. And for them to know we're in it with them, we have to be willing to say it and show it. And that's the bravery piece. And that's the piece that determines whether some companies get get to go on the ride of evolving with consumers throughout throughout culture and those that are forgotten and deemed irrelevant or neglectful or silent to the point of complicitness. Business is the bottom line, but consumers should be at the heart of what we do as marketers. They have to be at the heart. And our responsibility to create a society for them that is better than how we found it through the ways in which we can, through the messages, the images, the campaigns that we are in control of is our duty and responsibility as marketers. I hope you will embrace that change. I hope you will drive that change and be the force of change in your companies and your communities and in your brands, no matter how big or small the message is. Run it through the lens of the consumer. Run it through the lens of society. And make sure that when you are on the other side of society consuming it, it's something you'd be proud of. It's something that people feel empowered by. It's something that people feel seen by. Because that is the impact that marketing has on our society. That is the broader impact of what we do every day. And that is the way it's going to be. I don't envision a time where marketing is going to be able to separate, be separated from its impact on the society and our communities anymore. And I'm here for the change and here for the challenge. And I hope you are too. Thank you so much. Thank you.